The year was 1815 and the British Empire was still licking its wounds from the bloody and painful American Revolution. In spite of its recent failures, however, Britain could still be, relatively speaking, considered to be living in its glory days. They had acquired and managed to hold territory all over the world with the continents of Africa and Asia being hardest hit. With that said, it was inevitable that the small country of Nepal, just north of British ruled India, was to be invaded next. The British of course made true to this, and although they were expecting minimal resistance, the Nepali Gurkha regiments fought so ferociously and the British took so many casualties that High Command breathed a sigh of relief when a peace treaty was hastily reached with the small nation. This treaty then allowed the British to recruit and ally their former enemy and in World War II the help of the Gurkhas was quickly enlisted by the desperate allies and these Gurkhas proved to be some of the fiercest soldiers that the war had to offer. Better to die than to be a coward is the profound Gurkha motto that strikes fear into the hearts of enemies. To this day, the proud Gurkha men and the four main ethnic groups who exist under the name still carry with them a traditional 18 inch knife known as the Kukri. It was said that once a Kukri was drawn from the heat of battle, it had to taste blood and if not, its owner had to cut himself before returning it to its sheath. So let's get into why the Gurkhas were such bad asses and what they actually did in World War II. By the time of the war, most, if not all Gurkha units had been absorbed by the British army. This meant that wherever the Brits fought, you could expect to find a couple of Gurkha battalions nestled in there as well. According to one description of the Gurkhas by author Ralph G. Martin, they were always smiling, always laughing like a bunch of kids just young enough to think the whole world was a big joke. But when night came, these smiling, laughing little guys would creep quietly out between the lines with their kukris, their 18 inch razor sharp curved knives, and when they came upon across a big German guy, they would hack at his thighs. If somebody came at them with a bayonet, they would chop at his arms, otherwise they just confined themselves to lopping off heads which they would do quickly, cleanly, with a professional touch. The Gurkhas, it should also be added, had an almost unbreakable relationship with the British. Their morale in battle, while surrounded by both fellow Gurkhas and Brits, was resolute and both the British and Gurkha men came to be fiercely proud of the close military bonds forged together between these two completely different and distinct warrior cultures on war battlefields all around the world. Anyways, getting back on track, the 43 battalions of Gurkhas not only fought the Germans in North Africa and Italy of course, but they also gave the Japanese nightmares in Malaya, Singapore, Burma and Northeast India. The Gurkha battalions that fought against the Japanese weren't constrained by the politics of the European theatre and the fighting that went on there was much more chaotic. This led many Gurkhas and the Brits alongside them to develop a knowledge of the Japanese and a deep and combined hatred for them and their practices. This invariably led to some very interesting stories and we will now highlight the best of them for you in this video. Also, it's worth remembering for these stories that the Gurkha preferred method of fighting was with their Kukri. And these featured pretty heavily in most of these stories, including our first one, which comes from the accounts of a Gurkha soldier who fought the Japanese in the China, India, Burma theater of war. Suddenly, the Jemera stood up and screamed, Gokali Ayo. We all yelled in unison and followed him into the Japanese trenches. We rushed through the maze of narrow trenches, thrusting, slashing and chopping at the surprised enemy. Some tried to withdraw into the bunkers, but ran into other Gurkhas and were chopped down instantly. Then, they counterattacked from the western slope. One Japanese commander, with his sword drawn, rushed out from the main bunker screaming, Banzai, Banzai, Banzai! His men, with fixed bayonets, also charged and tried to flank us. We jumped out of the trenches to meet them. The Japanese officer cut down one Gurkha, then another. But then, just as quickly, the Jemada sprang forward and decapitated the enemy officer. The Jemada yelled, Gokali Eyo, no prisoners, and we responded, no prisoners, Gokali Eyo. The resultant collisions, 
were of steel against steel, steel against flesh and flesh against flesh. It was a killing frenzy among fanatic warriors. Our Lord Shiva, Goddess Kali and Yama witnessed this brutal hand-to-hand -hand fighting. It lasted about 15 minutes. Many Japanese escaped down the south slope, leaving 125 of their dead behind. Our platoon lost two men and three wounded. Our faces and uniforms were drenched with blood. This was one of the many testaments of bravery the Gurkhas showed in World War II. Another source of bravery from these men came from the extremely close relationship they had with Britain as stated before. The Gurkha men were known to form extremely close bonds of camaraderie with their British officers. In one infamous instance in Burma, a Gurkha unit observed a dozen half-starved Japanese who appeared willing to surrender. The British Lieutenant Colonel George Belinger and several of his men then left cover to bring the Japanese in, when, in true Japanese fashion, the fanatical men who were pretending to surrender threw themselves flat on the ground with their machine guns tearing into Belinger and his unsuspecting men. The Gurkha unit that was in the vicinity and who had just witnessed this understandably became outraged, and the Japanese were quickly and summarily killed by the Gurkhas. Although Gurkhas weren't terribly fond of taking Japanese prisoners in the first place, for the Gurkha men of the 1st Battalion 3rd Rifles, it would never happen again, and they never took another Japanese captive for the remainder of the war. All in all, a total of 11 Gurkhas won Victoria Crosses for gallantry and courage in the face of adversity in World War II. One of the most famous, and one that many of you have likely heard of, was Rafaman Lachiman Gurung, who also fought in Burma. The citation for his award goes like this. At Tongdown, Burma, on the west bank of the Irrawaddy on the night of the 12th to 13th of May 1945, Rifleman Lachiman Gurung was manning the most forward post of his platoon. At 1am, at least 200 enemy assaulted his company position. The brunt of the attack was borne by Rifleman Lachiman Gurung's section and by his own post in particular. This post dominated a jungle path leading up to his platoon locality. Before assaulting, the enemy held innumerable grenades at the position from close range. One grenade fell on the lip of Rifleman Lachiman Gurung's trench. He at once grasped it and held it back at the enemy. Almost immediately, another grenade fell directly inside the trench. Again, this Rifleman snatched it up and threw it back. A third grenade then fell just in front of the trench. He attempted to throw it back, but it exploded in his hand, blowing off his fingers, shattering his right arm and severely wounding him in the face, body and right leg. His two comrades were also badly wounded and lay helpless in the bottom of the trench. The enemy, screaming and shouting, now formed up shoulder to shoulder and attempted to rush the position by sheer weight of numbers. Rifleman Lachiman Gurung, regardless of his wounds, fired and loaded his rifle with his left hand maintaining a continuous and steady rate of fire. Wave after wave of fanatical attacks were thrown in by the enemy over the next four hours and all were repulsed with heavy casualties. For four hours after being severely wounded, Rifleman Lachiman Gurung remained alone at his post, waiting with the perfect calm for each attack, which he met with fire at point blank range from his rifle, determined not to give one inch of ground. Of the 87 enemy dead counted in the immediate vicinity of the company locality, 31 lay in front of this rifleman section, the key to the whole position. Had the enemy succeeded in overrunning and occupying rifle Lachiman Gurung's trench, the whole of the reverse slope position would have been dominated and turned. This rifleman, by his magnificent example, so inspired his comrades to resist to the last that although surrounded and cut off for three days and two nights, they held and smashed every attack. His outstanding gallantry and extreme devotion to duty in the face of overwhelming odds were the main factors in defeating the enemy. So, all in all, it's safe to say that the Gurkhas were some of the most formidable men of the war and it wasn't only the Japanese that they gave nightmares to. They are the best of friends and the worst of enemies, and there are plenty more stories in the North African and Italian theatre, as well as recent stories in Afghanistan too. However, in this video, I of course focused on the heroics of them in the Asian theatre of war. If you would like a part 2 of the war machines known as the Gurkhas, be sure to let me know in the comments section below whether you enjoyed this video, and of course click the like button if you did. Also, any personal stories about Gurkhas that you know of, I always appreciate in the comment section below as I love reading them. Anyways guys, just before you go, if you do want to help support the channel, please do check out the Patreon. I know I haven't been uploading consistently recently, but I've been really busy and I'm going to get back to once a week once a course that I'm doing is finished.
Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.